Happy Tuesday, everyone, and welcome back. We get to do devotions together today on a Tuesday, and um, I hope you actually got a chance to participate in yesterday's Devo because I want to tee up a story I talked about yesterday and then draw a little bit more from it. And so it may help a little bit more if you heard yesterday, and you might want to just go back and listen to that. But I, I said on Saturday night coming into the Sunday service that um, I had a rare experience where several times throughout the night, it could have even been as many as five or six times, I woke up with a phrase in my mind feeling like it was something I was supposed to share with the church, and now I'm sharing it here with our devotional audience too, that many people felt like the Lord was saying, many people are living below the spiritual potential of the life that I had for them. And that there's a lid, and part of the lid involved a lack of generosity, a lack of thinking a certain way. And so I bring that into today's story because today's story is one of my favorite stories in the Bible in terms of people shifting in their thinking, starting in fear and ending in faith, starting with survival mode, and then not just getting to kind of a success mode, but truly getting to the way God wants us to think and that story is found in 2 Kings chapter 6. It also happened in a famine. So Sunday's message happened in a famine. Today's story happens in a famine. 2 Kings 6, it says, Sometime later, King Ben-Hadad of Aram mustered his entire army and besieged Samaria. As a result, there was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 pieces of silver and a cup of dove's dung sold for five pieces of silver. So what's not fascinating about this story so far? That when you start getting so desperate, you start weighing donkey heads and dove's dung. And you're thinking that that somehow is edible. Well, that's their story. Well, here's where fear and uncertainty, and now let's add in another element, which is isolation or quarantine, because we're going to add in lepers into the story. Lepers in that day were... Uh, outcasts. They had their own colonies or communities or they had to be outside the city walls. So here's a couple of guys, several guys, 2 Kings chapter 7, fast forwarding, four guys. Now there were four men with leprosy sitting at the entrance of the city gates. Why should we sit here waiting to die? They asked each other. We will starve if we stay here with the famine in the city. We'll starve back there. We might as well go and surrender to the Aramean army. If they let us live, so much the better. But if they kill us, we would have died anyway. Well, again, at some point, um, all you can do is just think about getting by. And not much faith going on here. But what does happen is hunger makes them say, we might as well do something. We're so hungry. We're about to die anyway. We might as well try something. So at twilight, they set out for the camp of the Arameans. But when they came to the edge of the camp, no one was there for the Lord. The Lord had caused the Aramean army to hear the clatter of speeding chariots and the galloping of horses and the sound of a great army approaching. In other words, God had a sound effects department long before Hollywood ever did. And God released the sound effects and the army all ran. So here's this encampment, tents and stuff in the tents. It says, uh, here, it, actually, it says, uh, they thought the king of Israel had hired the Hittites, the Egyptians, and they called out to one another and panicked, and they ran into the night, abandoning their tents and horses and donkeys and everything else as they fled for their lives. When the lepers arrived at the edge of the camp, they came from, into one tent after the other, eating and drinking wine. They carried off silver and gold and clothing and hid it. Then here's the line. Finally, they said to each other, this is not right. This is a day of good news, and we are not sharing it with anyone. If we wait until morning, some calamity will fall upon us. Come now, let's go back and tell the people at the palace. This is a great story where uh, life even in a famine doesn't have to just be about survival. Uh, life in a famine doesn't just have to be about excess and blessing, and somehow you've managed to kind of escape what everybody else is suffering and you're actually profiting during this time. It's not about abundance for the sake of abundance. It's about believing that in every economic cycle or in every circumstance, God is there to help us be blessed and to be a blessing. 
that looks a lot of different ways. It doesn't always look materialistic, but it has an element that we are given something that we have a, an abundance of. Here's, here's an observation, maybe an application, but an observation for sure. Famine cannot stop what God wants to do. What can stop what God wants to do is people letting it go through them. Here are some lepers, the most unlikely group of people um, who have a change of heart. Rather than them saying, we've been so mistreated, we deserve this, you know, finally it's our turn and all the other kinds of things. They have a moment of realization that when blessed, the better story is to be a blessing. And so generosity, I think you know this, but generosity at its core is not really about money or stuff. That's, that's just a, an outlet of generosity. Generosity is really an attitude or it's a theology. It's a frame of mind that says God is a certain way. Maybe I should be like that. And so if you haven't really thought about this recently, I want to just encourage this. Even if it's not about tangible things, we have been given the most valuable intangible things. Forgiveness, God's love, healing, help, his presence. My friends, none of that God withheld from us. None of that does he hold back from us. He gives it to us in abundance. And so I just want to have a moment with you where we just pray over this mindset. If you're not there already, because many of you are, uh, I want to pray over it. I want to pray that God would help us see how he sees things, that we'd get past just wanting to survive, we'd get past just wanting to succeed, we'd live the way that he wants us to live with a generous spirit. Um, some of that, for many of us, might take some steps of faith. Um, I certainly want to commend all of you who already do this relative to the church, how you want to be generous to your church because you have a generous church, and so you support and give Others of you want to step into that, and that's going to be a new experience, and that's going to be a step of faith. And for all of us, I want to have us think this way. We live in a world, world, world right now that needs the good news. Not the news only that God blesses people, but the good news that Jesus died for their sins. The good news that he's a savior and a healer and a redeemer and a forgiver and a restorer and a soon coming king. We have good news and our world needs the good news. Let's not sit by our proverbial city gates and uh, just get by. Let's not find a place where all of a sudden we're enjoying the abundance of things. Let us have the realization that these people did, that when you got good news and you have it in abundance, it needs to be shared. So Jesus, help us with that. Help us to be a church that is so generous in spirit. There's nothing that we cling to except you. And as we do that, Lord, anything you want to hand to us, pour through us, we want to be open-handed, open-hearted people. And so let that rise up in this particular famine that we're in, this COVID kind of famine, this, this thing where people are isolated. Some truly are, are running out of resources. Others are making great profits, but they're not knowing what to do with it yet. Jesus, this is an environment for the church to rise up and have a different story. We have a story of blessing and a story to be a blessing. Help us with that. Help us carry it into today and the weeks ahead, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go out and live the word today.